AHA page for the last couple weeks, you've seen uh, our controversial position about Romney, undoubtedly. And uh, this video is going to be basically one of the last things we say about it because, well, uh, the election's almost over. Uh, but before it happens, we, we really want to try and put something out that explains our position um, with, with evidence and facts. Uh, because that's what pro-lifers like. They like evidence. They like facts. They like uh, well. They like those things. Uh, they're not they're not big fans of impassioned appeals. We like to appeal pe appeal to people with a logic. So I'm going to try and appeal to you all uh, with some logic, um, because I really want people to understand our position and understand that it's not simply um, foolish ideology. Uh, it's actually based. Well, we see what we think playing itself out in history. Um, so, I'm going to just start right off the bat. Uh, with Mitt Romney, we often talk about uh, him like he is a pro-life president. He is going to do something to save children. Um, and he is going to do something to prevent a certain number of abortions. And the way this is framed oftentimes is if you don't vote for Mitt Romney, you're abandoning millions of children to death. But what I want everyone to see is that, well, this is the first thing you, you need to get before I even tell you that. Abortion on demand is a reality. It's been a reality. From conception to birth, Abortion has been permitted in our country. So, because of that, because of that reality, voting for this man, our precious Ronald Reagan, or voting for his opponent, would not have, would not have abandoned any children to death because abortion on demand was a reality. If I voted for the man opposing H. Bush... I would not have abandoned any children to death because abortion on demand was a reality. If I would have voted for W. Bush's opponent, I would not have abandoned any children to death because abortion on demand was a reality. So, just based on that, why do I think that Romney, someone who has a less solidified view on abortion, why do I think that he is all of a sudden going to start saving children if all of our past pro-life presidents didn't save any children? Why, why would I think that? So, that's the first thing you need to understand. Now the next thing. This is to help you understand more the present. President Bush is credited with, where is it here? He's credited with signing into the law the Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act. Now, what did the Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act do? It banned a specific procedure. It said that you could not give a woman a drug to induce labor and deliver that child to its neck and stick scissors in its neck to cut its spinal cord or stick a vacuum in its brain to suck its brains out. It banned that procedure. And we all rejoiced. Pro-life victory. Yay, we're making progress. Abortion will be abolished in our lifetime. But what we didn't realize and what we didn't pay very close attention to is the reality that that ban didn't ban abortions in any meaningful time period. It banned a procedure. So do you know what abortionists did following that ban? They used an ultrasound to go and find a baby's heart in a mother's womb that may have been six, seven, eight months, and found that child in the womb and stuck its heart with a drug to stop its heart so that they could deliver it dead instead of alive so that they wouldn't be breaking the law. To simplify the analogy, uh, basically the Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act says you cannot kill children with scissors, but you can kill them with knives. It doesn't ban abortions. It doesn't ban late-term abortions. It banned a procedure. If you don't understand what I'm saying, look it up. 
Please look it up. Check my facts. So that 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 that's a victory. That's what we have. Now, I want to move fast because I'm sure I've already lost some of your attention. There are certain policies that pro-life presidents in history have put forth that always, they're always on this side of the policy. Um, Reagan, H. Bush, W. Bush, and Romney, I'm sure, will all say that they're for the Hyde Amendment, that they're for Mexico City policy, and um, those, are the, those are the two main things. Uh, they also oppose abortion, re using aborted babies for research or embryos for research. But what I want you to see, and this is something that you need to understand because we're very frustrated about our tax dollars going toward abortion with the HHS mandate, is that our tax dollars have always gone toward abortions. We've always given money to Planned Parenthood. The Hyde Amendment simply said that our money that went toward Planned Parenthood from the government needed to go toward lights, salaries, um, rental space, uh, birth control, education materials. It simply couldn't go toward abortions. So I don't know why we're so upset. I don't know why we're getting arrested uh, for the HHS mandate when we've been paying for abortions all along. Um, and also, if you look up the Mexico City policy, uh, you'll see that there are various loopholes. Uh, the Mexico City policy at one point said something like, the federal government can't give money to non-government organizations in other countries that promote abortion as a form of birth control. Which is to say they could give them to organizations that promote abortion for health reasons, for economic reasons, for any other reason as long as it's not for birth control. So. You need to see that these pro-life measures that have, the presidents have supported have basically been illusory. Yet we've talked about them like they're meaningful pro-life victories. And National Right to Life will give them their endorsement. So that's the legislative side. Now that doesn't really matter because Romney said he wasn't going to do anything legislative. legislatively. He doesn't have anything that he wants to champion as a cause. But he has made clear he will be a pro-life president, and he will appoint pro-life justices. Now, if I wanted to be, well, fair, some might call it petty, you look at his history in Massachusetts and you see that he appointed a pro-choice justice. That's fine. Let's just say he really did change his mind. Let's say he's truly pro-life now. Let's say he's truly pro-life like Reagan's truly pro-life, right? President Reagan appointed Sandra Day O'Connor, Justice Kennedy, and another justice that doesn't matter for my point, but Sandra Day O'Connor and Justice Kennedy and another Supreme Court justice appointed by another pro-life president, H. Bush, Souter. These three people, these three justices, wrote the plurality opinion for Planned Parenthood vs. Casey. And what that did is it basically said a few of these regulations that you put forward are valid and Roe v. Wade is still valid. Abortion is a constitutional right. Awesome. So our, our pro-life justices upheld Roe v. Wade. Or maybe they weren't pro-life. Maybe they were just appointed by pro-life presidents. Another one, just for your consideration, is... Um, Justice Roberts, who was appointed by George W. Bush, he upheld the HHS mandate, the one that we're really mad about because it's going to make our money go toward tax dollar or toward abortions. George W. Bush, our precious pro-life president, who was going to make pro-life appointments to the Supreme Court, yet he's going to uphold a law that makes us pay for abortifacient contraception, and for abortions. It doesn't sound very pro-life. doesn't sound very pro-life at all. So, what I want you to see is that the pro-life legislation that we've seen historically, these pro-life presidents, these pro-life justices, haven't been real. So, pardon me if I want to call the whole thing a charade. I... 
last point I want I want to make, and 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 this is just to tweak our analogy for well for abolitionists and for incrementalists, because I, I think our analogy is altogether wrong. And, and here's the analogy we basically work with when we're talking about a rape exception candidate like Romney. We say there's a burning building, there's children inside, Romney wants to save 95, Barack Obama doesn't want to save any. First thing to point out is that Mitt Romney won't save any. Just like Reagan didn't save any, just like H. Bush didn't save any, just like W. Bush didn't really save any. Just like Mitt Romney won't save any. So that's the first point. It's not really about saving children. It's about how many they'll authorize the murder of. And so far, since 73, every president has authorized all of the abortions that have, that have been done legally. So we're not really talking about saving children. We're talking about how many deaths will you authorize. And kind of Mitt Romney, it's important that you understand that I don't think he's actually going to ban abortion in any meaningful sense. But the other thing, I, I want to work through this, even if he was going to, even if he said, I am genuinely going to save the 95 and for whatever reason we believed he was going to do it, consider an analogy just, just to think carefully about this. There is a community of a million people, and it is run by one person. And that one person authorizes the destruction of all 100 orphanages that reside in this community. There are 100 orphanages in this community. They say that it is perfectly fine for someone to chain the door shut of that orphanage and set it on fire. That, we would say that man's a monster. He says it's okay for you to chain the door shut of an orphanage and set it on fire? That's wicked. Now imagine another leader rises up and he's running against this current leader who says we can chain the door shut to all the orphanages and he says, I think you should only be able to chain shut five of them and set it on fire. Many of you would say, well, of course I would save those. I, I would vote for him. I would vote for the lesser evil. But I'd ask you, if, if he genuinely authorized the destruction of five orphanages instead of a hundred, would you let that guy watch your children? Would you let him babysit your kids? He's letting people chain the doors shut of five orphanages and set them ablaze. Of course you wouldn't set you wouldn't let that man watch your children. Why would you want him to lead your country? See, and what's sad is we've all lost our minds. That's why I have to give an example like, a, like an orphanage with born children instead of talking about abortion like it is what it is. Because for whatever reason we have more empathy for born people. But even if the situation was like I described. We're voting for a man who will authorize the murder of human beings. Why would we want him to lead our country? We are talking about two merciless tyrants who authorize the murder of children. And one is saying, I'll murder less and we're supporting him enthusiastically, like we have a victory. I refuse to think about children like they are increments. I refuse to make them numbers. You need to understand they're humans made in the image of God. Those conceived in rape and incest are human beings made in the image of God, worthy of protection and to abandon them to the slaughter, even if that is what we're talking about, which I don't think that is what we're talking about. We're talking about a very inhumane person. So, that's why we don't support Mitt Romney. History does not bear itself out to say someone 
in this position is going to say they're pro-life and do something pro-life about it. We really think that the Republican Party is selling us a bill of goods. They've been lying to us. They've been basically telling us, here's some illusory pro-life victories. We hope you're stupid enough to believe it. And unfortunately, we have been. And we've also been stupid enough to buy the idea that Democrats are pro-choice and Republicans are pro-life because unfortunately, the abortion numbers don't change. They don't change from president to president. The fact that we think Barack Obama is the most pro-abortion president in history is because he opposed illusory pro-life regulations. Are you, are, you, are you getting this? He opposed legislation that didn't mean anything. Therefore, we think he's more pro-abortion. But who's really more evil and more pro-abortion? The guy who's honest about it and says, I think it's a woman's right to choose and she should be able to murder her children. Or the guy who says, I want to get all the people who think it's wrong to kill children to think that I think it's wrong to kill children and then pass legislation that makes them think that there's been pro-life progress so that we can keep using them to vote for us so that we can keep actually accomplishing policies that we want to enact and that they can continue to be our voting block. Who's more evil? A wolf? or a wolf in sheep's clothing.